In this lesson we're going to look at um, how to divide fractions and just conceptually what is going on uh, when we do divide fractions. So first of all let's go back to the meaning of what um, what division really is. So for example what does 20 divided by 5 mean? Well it's like asking how many times does 5 go into or fit into 20? So if I take something like 3 divided by 1 half well, 3 divided by 1 half is asking how many times 1 half fits into 3. So maybe to help here, let's, let's draw a little picture. So I'm going to draw a representation of, of the number 3 here. So we're going to do just a couple, or I guess 3 little blocks here. So if each of these is one whole, all together, this gives me 3, right? But if I want to answer how many times 1 half fits into 3, let's kind of understand what we're doing. We're taking the 3 holes and we're breaking them into 2 pieces. So each of these sides of one of these holes is equal to 1 half. Now from the picture you can see what the answer is, right? So 3 divided by 1 half equals 6, right? Because these are all size 1 half, and so 6 of these 1 half size pieces fit into 3, okay? And so kind of understand where the 6 is coming from. It seems to be coming from the fact that there's a 2 on bottom here and a 3 here, because there's 3 holes, and then all of a sudden you're splitting them into 2s. Okay, so that seems to be where that 6 uh, is coming from. Let's do something similar here. It says, what is 4 divided by 2 thirds? So in other words, how many times does 2 thirds? Uh, let's write this out. How many times... does two-thirds fit into four? Okay, so let's draw a similar picture here. Um, so I've got, uh, let's represent four here. So there's one. Try to keep these all about the same size. Two. Three and 4. And so uh, we want to know how many times does 2 thirds fit in. Well first since we're talking about 2 thirds um, that bottom number is 3 so it seems like it would be wise to take each of these holes and split them into 3 equal pieces. Okay. All right, so let's answer the question just from a picture standpoint. So here, from here to here, is two thirds, right? And then joining the last and the first of these two is two thirds. Taking the last two chunks of those two is two thirds. And so you get the idea of what's happening here. Two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. And so it looks like there are six two thirds in there. So on the one hand, we can say, all right, four divided by two thirds equals six. Okay, and it's just coincidence that these happen to be the same answer. All right, but let's also think about where this six may have come from. So I took the four holes. Since uh, my denominator here is three, I want to consider how many two-thirds pieces we have in there. Since that denominator is three, really what I did was I um, tripled the number of pieces I was looking at, right? Because I had four holes and then all of a sudden I split each one into three. So four times three. Okay, so let's just write that out. Four times three. Okay, but then um, since I was interested in how many two-thirds fit into six, 
I'm not just going to count all of these pieces up like I did in the last example. I'm going to count every pair. So there's a pair, there's one, there's another pair, there's two, right, and so on. So, so since, since I'm counting pairs, I take the number of pieces and I divide it by 2. Okay, and of course you can see 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. And so that also is a way of understanding how we get 6. But now let's back it up one step further. Okay, how can we look at this in the context of operations with fractions? Well, would we agree that this same situation would happen if I had taken 4 over 1 times 3 over 2? That would give me this same 4 times 3 over 2, which would then give me 6. Now let's back up here and kind of do the same thing. Um, this whole business of 3 divided by a half, well, okay, um, one way I could think of how 6 came about would be to take 3 over 1 times 2 over 1. That would give me 6. And so notice what's happened here in these two examples. The whole number that I started with here, or this first number, I have just replicated right here, but I just put it over 1. Same thing up here, 3 over 1. The 1 half becomes 2 over 1. The 2 thirds becomes 3 over 2. Right? And we kind of explained why it is it was appropriate for us to multiply 4 and 3 and then divide by 2. And so all this is true in general. So to divide fractions in general, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So again, to Divide by a fraction is the same as to multiply by its reciprocal. And a reciprocal just simply means the flip. And so here's symbolically what's happening. This problem right here, a divided by or a over b divided by c over d, is the same as taking the first fraction, a over b, and then multiplying it by d over c. So in short, to divide two fractions, flip the second fraction, and multiply.